In this video, we're going to take an introduction at the work and theories of Karl Marx. Okay, so this is just the the first uh, video in outlining uh, what we're going to be doing in the sort of mini series that is understanding Karl Marx. Okay, and we're just here. To, here we are to provide a basic overview of some of the th key theories that were developed by Karl Marx within philosophy, economics, and sociology. Okay, so we're just going to take a little introduction here. So Karl Marx was a German philosopher. He was an economist, an historian, sociologist, political theorist. He was basically everything. Okay, he studied philosophy and law at university, and his thinking has developed through his life. Okay, so we'll look at these in more detail throughout. It's very interesting to know that his early works um, are often very different to his later ones. Okay, so early works. So early, early works, different to later works, different to later. Okay, so the, you can clearly see an evolution of his theories, his ideas going through uh, when it comes to understanding his philosophy. Okay, he was heavily influenced by a number of different thinkers. Okay, he was influenced by thinkers um, in idea in German idealist philosophy, things like people like Immanuel Kant, he was influenced by Hegel, very um, importantly, he was influenced by Feuerbach, okay, so we'll go have a look at these people in the next video, and I think it should be clear to say that there's a lot of controversy around the name Karl Marx when it comes to uh, modern political discourse, so it must be clear that whether you love him or hate him, that he is one of the most influential political thinkers in history, okay? And an understanding of his work, whether or not you agree with it or not, an understanding of the work will help people to critique it and help people to maybe develop different theories based off that, okay? So it's very important to um, study at least a little bit uh, the works of Karl Marx. Speaking of the works of Karl Marx, we're going to have a look down here. He wrote a vast amount of literature okay and we can divide them up generally into the following into the following different um, substratus okay but the thing is what's important is that often these theories are not um, they're in their own little concrete boxes they cross over into each other quite a lot so his early philosophical writings include things like uh, papers on the Jewish question and the economic and philosophical manuscripts and the thesis on Feuerbach, okay, who we've just mentioned earlier on. He also has writings on historical materialism, his theory of history, and with that we really have the German ideology, we have the uh, contribution to the critique of political, philo uh, of political economy, and uh, somewhat the Communist Manifesto fits in with this theory of history as well. Okay, And there's also the, uh, the Grundis, which was a, a, a work that cannot be translated into English, which is also another thing that we should uh, we have to make clear about Karl Marx's work is all of it has been translated and all of it was complicated even when it was written in its native language ha have that complexity and translate it uh, loosely translate it into other languages and you find that it's very difficult to read and to really decipher anything from it Okay, you've also got very important economic writings such as uh, Capital, Volume 1, okay, which is probably the most important when it comes to economics. People will disagree with me on that, but, you know, hey-ho. And then his later writings on the Civil War in France and the critique of uh, Gotha program, okay. So these are the different works that you can uh, find when it comes to Karl Marx. Important ones would arguably be uh, the economic and philosophical manuscripts, probably Thesis on Feuerbach, uh, the German Ideology, Communist Manifesto, and Capital, okay? They're the probably... But then again, all of the other works tie into the things that he developed in these, um, in these uh, papers and these works anyway. So when it comes to key theories that we that we're going to look at okay we're going to look at his earlier developing of the theory of alienation okay that's found in the the, the paris philosophical manuscripts in uh, i believe 1844 
okay so we'll have a look at that we'll have a look at really trying to decipher that and maybe trying to come up with some kind of critique of uh, the theory of alienation and also note that the theory of alienation comes up later on in his life but it's also it's this also um it's also quite famous for not appearing everywhere later on in his life. So in, in some areas, he seems to have just dropped the theory of alienation and then he brings it back again. We, we It's very hard to decipher. Okay, We're going to look at one of I, what I would argue is one of his most difficult theories to, to really get a grip of, which is his theory on historical materialism. Although, again, people will always disagree, people will disagree with me about whether or not it's most difficult or not, obviously. And then in the later lessons, we'll have a look at his understanding of ideology, uh, communism, and uh, generally on economics. Okay. So before I end this introduction, it must be made clear, again, I've said it a, m a couple of times, that there is a lot of disagreement about Karl Marx. Okay. It's almost like his works can be interpreted in, in many different ways and go down many different routes. Okay. So there's no real one correct way of interpreting it. There's definitely ways of interpreting his works wrongly, but there's no correct way of doing it. Okay, so we're just going to try and take the most objective understanding and have a look at uh, the modern uh, philosophical debate on it throughout this little series. Okay, so we don't have to... I'm not going to come up with my own theories on what Karl Marx was trying to say. I'm going to just give the basic introduction.